Et déjà, il n'y a pas de vol là, on est en France. L'immigration légale et illégale n'est plus tenable. Al Jazeera's investigative unit exposes links between one of France's largest political parties, led by Marine Le Pen, and a movement demanding the expulsion of Muslims from Europe. Là où il faudrait promettre à tous ces islamistes et à leurs complices une balle entre la tête. Our investigation unmasks an emerging right-wing ideology called identitarianism. It claims Europe's identity is white and Christian. They see themselves as crusaders who defend the values of a white West in the face of the assaults of the Arab Muslim world. Marine Le Pen's claims that she's rid her party of the extreme far right are laid bare. Marine Le Pen's de-demonization is torn to shreds by these images. And how members of the identitarian movement behind closed doors celebrate Hitler's Germany. Ne vous méprenez pas, ceci n'est pas un simple manifeste, c'est une déclaration de guerre. Nous sommes demain, vous êtes hier. Nous sommes la génération identitaire. For six months, Lille was home to an undercover reporter from Al Jazeera's investigative unit. He infiltrated one of Europe's fastest growing far right organizations. It calls itself Génération Identitaire, Generation Identity, and has supporters across the continent. Our undercover reporter, Louis, made contact with the group's Flanders branch. Generation Identity had set up a stall outside its Lille headquarters, a bar called the Citadel. The man greeting our investigator is Aurelien Verhassel. Louis is led into the Citadel, where Generation Identity members drink and discuss their political strategy. The Citadel is a bar with a courtyard at the back. There's another courtyard by the front entrance. GI members usually meet at the bar on a Friday evening. Our undercover reporter uses a concealed camera to record conversations. The hassle says membership has nearly tripled in a year. Aurelien Verhassel is a very important leader in the north. His base in Lille is a private bar which welcomes the far right. It's a conference space. It's a place where they can hold discussions, have some drinks like in pubs, but it's private. Branches of Generation Identity have also been set up in Italy, Austria, Germany and the UK. GI presents itself as a patriotic movement that brings together people of similar culture and values. It claims to be non-violent and non-racist. It's attracted thousands of mostly young followers across Europe. Generation Identity is the largest far-right group in France and probably in Europe. 
It is mainly made up of white nationalists. For them, the greatest threat is Islam and mass immigration, which, for them, threatens the European identity and the white identity. The group has mounted a series of publicity stunts, which attracted international headlines. Around 100 militants blocked a mountain pass on the France-Italy border, which was used by illegal migrants. Aurelien Verhassel was one of the GI leaders taking part. Our undercover reporter became a member of Verhassel's group. In his bar, Louis discovers a hidden world. Behind the facade of respectability is the true face of generation identity. The door to the citadel is usually locked. Louis is met by Cyril Weyenberg. In the courtyard, Louis and Weyenberg are joined by another activist, Charles Tessier. The men discuss a recent night out. Because we, when we left, we went to the place. We met a group. They were a dozen, seven guys. Ah, this guy, he wanted to go out with his magnum of Grecus and all that. The big bottles. And it ended when Rémi arrived. The big right hand. The guy heard a sound. He went like that. I've never heard this sound. He's broken. He's broken. He's broken. He's broken. With a hole in the hole. He starts to piss the sound, but with the hole. It's Rémi who has the hole. Yeah. Okay. And you have the girls of their group who are interposed. No, they're not fragile. We're going to be fighting at 3 against 3. And they're going to be fighting in the corner. And we're going to be charging. Oh, the guys! Oh, the guys! We're going to be in the street. The man who led the violence against the Arab youths is Remy Faliz. But the day where I know that I have a malady incurable, man, I bought an arm. Le carnage, hein. Il me dit qu'il t'a mouru de ma maladie, autant me faire fusiller par les flics. Le carnage, c'est contre qui Une mosquée, n'importe quoi. Je... Ah, bon, Même voiture bien. bélier, je prends ma voiture. Bam Allez Generation Identity's roots are in France. The group rose to prominence when it occupied a mosque in Poitiers. Banners called for a national referendum on Muslim immigration. For Generation Identity, France is their main battleground in Europe. Quite simply because the Muslim community in the country is the largest in Europe. And above all, France has been the victim of terrorist attacks in recent years. Whether in the Bataclan, Charlie Hebdo or Nice. Perhaps more so than other countries in Europe. Remy Faliz boasts that if he were to mount a reprisal attack, he would target a market in Lille that is popular with Muslims. I say to my mother, I say, Maman, you don't go to the market of Oisem. It's me who goes, who goes. I'm going to go there and I'm going to do a carnage. Charlie Hebdo is on the side, it's a piece of shit. The market of Oisem, it's where all the new halls of Lille go. You go to a Sunday in a car, you're going to do a bordel. Je laisserai ma carte d'identité ce soir. La banque, c'est comme il fait. Et puis à 10. Puis au contre Olivier, reviens le dire. Tout ça, merde. Ok, d'accord. Fond de cinquième. Là, t'en vas faire un papier. Pour le peu, je meurs pas. Pendant le carnage. Hop, j'en refais un autre. Ah, mais je te jure. 
He is laughing with his friends about a potential terrorist attack. This is very interesting because there are many far-right groups in France at the moment which have either been dismantled or are being investigated by the police because they have been preparing actions against Muslims or Arabs. So what we see here is that the identitarians are themselves ending up as potential terrorists. Recently, a stranger came to the citadel. Louis was told what happened afterwards by the Lille boss of Generation Identity. Our reporter has heard many accounts of physical assaults, but GI's head of activism in Lille insists that the movement has turned its back on violence. That night, the hassle makes an announcement. Il y a des journalistes qui vont venir, des journalistes québécois. <laughs> the image that Verhassel presents to visiting journalists is of a committed but professional politician. The premier des problèmes aujourd'hui en Europe, en France et en Europe, c'est l'immigration massive et l'islamisation de nos territoires. The roots of identitarianism lie in a claim to an ancestral homeland. Generation Identity is not a political party, but a feeder for one of the largest parties in France. He tells his interviewer that GI's key policy is what they call remigration. Aujourd'hui, le concept qu'on essaie de mettre sur le devant de la scène, c'est le concept de remigration. Le remigra la remigration, c'est quoi C'est qu'une grande partie, ou la quasi-totalité des extra-européens, soit en France et en Europe, retournent dans leur pays d'origine. Serais-tu prêt à ce que le gouvernement français paye des bateaux pour les embarquer pour les ramener chez eux Pourquoi pas ouais. Après, je veux dire, nous, les extra-européens, euh, les islamistes, peuvent repartir chez eux par tous les moyens, en bateau, en avion ou en secoue volant. Ils repartent chez eux comme ils veulent. The movement has published details of its remigration policy. The program to send non-European families to their ancestral homelands is at the core of GI's vision for France's future. A prominent leader of the identitarian movement comes to Lille. At the Citadel, an activist challenges the idea that former colonies would accept remigration. Tu conditionnes le retour des clandestins par l'aide au développement. Une termine, je pense. 
et ils sont dans une crise économique grave. Euh, ils ont besoin de la France financièrement. C'est qui qui leur donne des sous C'est pas le Maroc, hein C'est pas le Mali, c'est qui C'est la France. Donc, tu leur dis, écoute, bah, on veut bien vous aider financièrement, mais vous reprenez vos gulliches. In his speech, Katam rejects multiculturalism. On vit à l'étranger euh, euh, chez soi. Et les gens ressentent un sentiment de dépossession identitaire. On leur vole leur chez, chez eux. On leur vole leur manière de vivre, de socialiser. Et on n'en a pas deux de chez soi. Et ça, c'est un sentiment extrêmement violent. Katam was in charge of communications for GI's Defend Europe campaign in 2017. Activists disrupted attempts by aid workers to bring refugees from Africa safely across the Mediterranean. Katan's vision is of a divided world, a West threatened by a Muslim enemy. The degree of hate is maximum. Une haine qui a trouvé dans l'islam politique et dans l'islam euh, son porte-étendard. Mais il s'agit bien d'une haine des Français, une haine de ce que nous sommes en tant qu'Européens. So here we hear Generation Identity's whole discourse, its DNA, against multiculturalism. Integration does not work. There is only one solution, remigration. Mathias de Stal has been investigating France's far right for the past five years. The concept of remigration is crazy. It would mean deporting thousands and thousands of people to countries which are supposedly their countries of origin because their ancestors might have lived there or because the color of their skin or their culture are associated with countries which are not France. It would practically be an ethnic cleansing. Catin also told GI members that he campaigns for the National Front. Over the Christmas holidays, Louis arranges a night out with GI activists he'd been told had been involved in racist beatings. He meets the Generation Identity member who proposed driving a vehicle into a crowded market. Joining them is GI activist Petit Paul. And also Cyril Weyenberg. There was an incident the night before. Les mecs étaient en train de vomir sur une voiture. Deux maghrébins. Ils ont dit non, mais les gars, c'est respectueux, c'est pas votre bagnole, c'est bien, ça sent le Il y a des gars qui nous séparent. Ils commencent à m'insulter de droite. Weyenberg boasts about what happened next. Ouais, mon frère. Bougez pas, je la gâche, je fais du poids. Deux. J'y vais, c'est bon. Je vais pas le couvrir. Le coup de pied sauté. Le mec s'écoute contre un grillage comme ça. C'était n'importe quoi. The group head to the city's main nightlife strip. They bump into another far-right extremist. Leroux has just returned from Hamburg in Germany. He hurled abuse at anti-fascist demonstrators. Hey, 
Vous êtes un petit peu Ta mère, je vais ta mère, ta mère. Mais bonne ambiance Oh, et discipline. Et un sans poli, gros, j'ai fait n'importe quoi. Programmé sur les bars. Je suis arrivé avec une barre de fer dans Burger King, j'ai dit, alors, ils sont où les antipas <rire> Les gens ils m'ont regardé, plus c'est un je suis pas arrêté par la police. Anti, anti Le Roux, Falise and Pretty Paul leave the bar. They confront a young woman who uses Arabic slang. A bouncer from one of the bars uses pepper spray. LaRue pushes one of the teenagers. She's then pepper sprayed. Faliz strikes her. A week after the attack, Louis returns to the citadel. Remy Falise, the man who led the violence, is holding court. I'm having trouble expressing myself. I'm so disturbed. They intend to get into fights. They say it. They're preparing themselves. They have gloves for hitting. These are people who make direct references to Hitler, who speak with phrases the Nazis use. That is punishable by law. Yes, that is punishable by law. I mean, the law must be applied. In part two, National Front members discuss arming for a civil war if their party wins power. And we expose a Generation Identity leader working for the National Front. Al Jazeera's undercover reporter, Louis, has infiltrated the Lille branch of Generation Identity in northern France. He witnessed a race attack by GI activists. One activist expresses a desire to kill indiscriminately at a market popular with Muslims. Je vais là-bas, mais je te fais un, un carnage. Charlie Hebdo à côté, c'est de la piste de chien. Marine Le Pen est élue. 
président du Front National. When Marine Le Pen became leader of the National Front in 2011, she made a pledge to supporters. Chers amis, c'est de ce moment que datera l'irrésistible ascension de notre mouvement vers le pouvoir. De ce congrès commencera un effort sans précédent pour transformer le Front National. Faire de notre parti un socle de construction et de renaissance de notre pays. Quand Marine Le Pen est devenue présidente... When Marine Le Pen became president of the National Front, her first concern was to de-demonize the party by kicking out those whose racism or anti-Semitism were shown in the media. She did this to break the National Front's electoral glass ceiling and to get more voters. Dozens of members were accused of extremism and kicked out of the party. They included her father, who she'd replaced as leader, for statements he'd made about the Holocaust. Expelled from the party he built from the ground, Jean-Marie Le Pen no longer has a place in the National Front. Le Pen's plan to de-demonize the National Front appeared to be working. Allez, Marie! In the 2017 presidential election, she polled more than 7 million votes in the first round. Saturday afternoon in Lille city centre. As Louis spends more time with Generation Identity and its Lille boss Aurelien Verhassel, he discovers that Le Pen's effort to purge the party of extremism might not be working. Louis and Verhassel go for a drink near the town square. Louis asks him about his job. Our reporter soon finds more evidence of connections between the National Front and the extreme far right. At the Citadel Bar, the headquarters of the Flanders branch of Generation Identity, he meets visitors from Bordeaux. They say they provided security for National Front leaders during the presidential election. Marion Maréchal, a hardliner and niece of Marine Le Pen is addressing a National Front election rally. The activists from Bordeaux boast that they also provided protection for the National Front leader. On a fait pour Marine. On a une salle de muscu, on a 15 machines, on fait de la pause. Et c'est bien, quoi. Ça fait, ça fait 9 ans que ça vient. The visitors soon reveal their real role, right-wing vigilantes for hire. On est 80 adhérents. Mais le problème, c'est que, en fait, ça, c'est une milice. Bon, parce que, en fait, on est, on a un club de moto, mais il n'y a pas de moto. <laughs> The militia would like to carry out Generation Identity-style stunts, such as a rooftop protest at a hotel for migrants. The hassle is worried that his guests will damage the image of the far right. 
Unlike other far-right movements, Generation Identity is sensitive about its media image. The Hassel says he's expelled numerous ultra-right activists who are attracted to the Citadel. The hustle later explains to Louis the importance of winning power and why he has to deal firmly with those who perform Nazi salutes. The Hassel sees Generation Identity as a modern version of traditional fascism. Generation Identity differs from the traditional far right by the image they try to project. What they realized was that marginalization would never bring their ideas to power and never make their ideas spread. So they try to have the cleanest image possible. But ultimately, the message remains the same. One evening, Louis starts taking pictures with his phone. There is constant fear that what goes on inside the citadel will be exposed. Louis meets a GI member who works as a political officer for the National Front. Remy Murat worked alongside Philippe Amery. Amery is head of the National Front in a regional council in northern France. He's speaking to one of the most powerful figures in Generation Identity. Louis first spotted Pierre Lati at the Citadel. Pas votre réponse aux attentats n'est que flots et piano. Là où il, là où il faudrait promettre à tous ces islamistes et à leurs complices une balle entre la tête, on ne prétend pas de les guerres. Larty tells our undercover reporter that he lost his former job after his role in Generation Identity became known. Larty spoke about his new job with the National Front at the Regional Council Officers in Lille. Oh. 
après Bibi, c'est euh, jouer les plans en avant. Inside the Citadel, Louis talks to a GI activist about Larty's role at the National Front. Mais du coup, ça veut dire que tu peux être et identitaire et marcher pour le front ou tu veux... Normalement, c'est ça. Ils ne peuvent plus apparaître, là, du coup. C'est de quoi C'est d'être au front, là, ils ne peuvent plus apparaître. Mais le front, ils il, il assument sa, sa ligne identitaire. Qui est pas ou toujours pas officiellement, maintenant ils peuvent pas nier euh, le rapprochement. Hein. Il y a plusieurs têtes connues qui y sont, euh, des mecs compétents, des mecs doués. Euh. Il est chef de cabinet, oui, ça, ça veut dire quoi Chef de cabinet, ça veut dire. Euh, en gros, tu prépares les, toutes les réunions de, 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 en gros, de, de la personnalité front. C'est laquelle aller C'est Emery C'est Philippe Emery. Philippe Amory is a hardliner who appears to provide a link between generation identity and the party leadership. Aurelien Verhassel plays a key role in recruiting identitarians who want to work for the National Front. As Louis discovers when he asked Meurin if he could get a job with the party. It is very surprising to see Aurelien Verhassel has so much influence with the National Front. This is a political force which is integrating with the National Front which will end up in the party's programs and the speeches of National Front officials. It is important because the identitarians have succeeded in their strategy of entryism. After the first round of the presidential election, the two most popular candidates competed for France's highest office. Marine Le Pen against the country's rising political force, former banker Emmanuel Macron. Le Pen performed poorly during an election debate. Vive la France! Macron won the runoff comfortably. There was enormous despair and disappointment after the second round of the presidential election, after the debate between Marine Le Pen and Macron, which led to her being internally contested. Their strategy was put in doubt, notably Philippot's strategy. Florian Philippot, the National Front's moderate vice president, was the biggest casualty of the infighting. The role of Florian Philippa was in the end to bring on board people who didn't come from the far right to vote for Marine Le Pen, which was a partial success. He was the face of de-demonization in the media. Why did Florian Philippa leave? Because in the end, he felt that this cleanup at the National Front was impossible. Bonsoir Marine Le Pen. But Marine Le Pen insists she has rid the party of extremists. Dit d'extrême droite, mais nous skinheads et autres, mais ces qui, qui gravitent jamais, autour du FN. Non, ces gens-là n'ont jamais été à la marge du Front National. Et chaque groupement euh, sérieux euh, comme le nôtre cherche à les évacuer lorsqu'ils viennent. Ça dure depuis des années et nous n'avons aucun rapport avec ces groupes. The hassle blamed Filippo's moderate line for Le Pen's defeat.
Remy Murat took a job with the National Front to promote the policies of generation identity. He found an open door. Bah en fait, je suis allé en me disant, euh, si je regardais, bah, j'ai un truc. Mais en fait, le truc, la, la situation aujourd'hui fait qu'il n'y a plus les filles pour Donc, de toute façon, c'est assez spectaculaire. On a gagné déjà. À partir du moment où tu as les mecs de Philippe qui sont partis, il n'y a même plus de rapport de force. Que, en fait, il n'y a plus que nous. When she lost the elections last year, all the historic figures of the party who were biting their tongues came galloping back and took the National Front back. They returned to the fray with these identitarian positions in their baggage, notably on the questions of immigration and Islam. Louis wants to learn more about Generation Identity's strategy to influence the policies of the National Front. He meets a prominent activist from Paris. Avec un in Lille's main square, Louis and Verhassel are joined by another far-right activist. He tells them about an invitation he's received to meet a senior member of the National Front and party spokesman. Sebastian Chenu is openly gay. The Hassel and the far right activist make homophobic remarks. <laughs> The Hassel confirms that he also had a meeting with Chenu. Since Le Pen's presidential election defeat, Chenu has emerged as one of her most powerful allies. Chenu is part of the National Front Group at the Haute de France Council, along with Philippe Amery. Le Pen is also a member. Louis is about to discover more on Chenu's links to generation identity. He visits the apartment of an activist he's met at the Citadel, Romuald Matuzak. Inside, generation identity symbol. During the 2017 election campaign, Matuzak was filmed alongside Aurelien Verhassel. They were attending a National Front rally near Lille, where the niece of the party leader, Maria Maréchal, was speaking. Initially, Verhassel was not going to attend. Matuzak claimed that Verhassel only went after a personal invitation from a senior figure in Le Pen's party. 
au final, c'est euh, Chenu, qui est Sébastien Chenu, qui lui a envoyé un message en lui disant bah, Je t'invite, tu peux venir. But the hassle then ran into another problem. Du coup, il est allé. Et au final, après, le vigile a dit Non, mais vous rentrez pas. Ça The hassle needed Chenu's help once more. The hassle then went into the hall. Matuzak tells Louis about the hassle's work for the National Front. Our undercover reporter discovers that members of the National Front are welcome visitors at the Citadel. They discuss what would happen if the National Front were to form a government. Marine, Marion, elle viendrait mettre en place une politique nationale, expulsion des délinquants, il y aura de la révolte. Il y aura de la révolte. Pascal Joie says they would need to be armed. Il devrait avoir une guerre civile. Tire au jugé pour être fenêtre. Hein. Déjà, le premier, tu fais baisser la tête, vu la détonation, le mec, il va sortir à voler toi, puis le deuxième, t'as juste. Hein. C'est quelque chose de très, très délicat. Je peux te faire du calage au même temps. The National Front members boast of an array of weapons. Bien katana aussi dans les autres. Oui, ça c'est un formidable, c'est super efficace. Rien qui peut t'arrêter avec ça. There is a breeding ground that makes it possible to mobilize French white people against Islam and Muslims, precisely by promoting the idea of an ethnic war, the idea of a probable civil war between Muslims and others. Et je voulais savoir si euh, tu avais des plans en fait pour avoir euh, des armes. Ouais. Je connais des gens qui ont des armes, je connais des gens qui peuvent avoir ce qu'ils veulent. Marine Le Pen said that since she became president of the National Front, she has publicly kicked out all those who've been violent, racist or anti-Semitic. She said Pierre Larty has never worked for the National Front at the Haute de France Council. Le Pen added that Aurélien Verhassel has never worked or written speeches for the National Front. Jean-David Catin stated that his association, Les Identitaires, was distinct from generation identity and was not dependent on it. Sébastien Chenu confirmed he told Verhassel that the meeting with Marion Maréchal was open to everyone. He said that while Verhassel did contact him to say he was not allowed in, he did not go looking for him, and that Verhassel's subsequent application to join the National Front had been refused. Philippe Amery said the recruitment of party assistants at the Eau de France Regional Council is done within the law. He said the evidence presented by Al Jazeera is an obvious interference by the Qatari authorities in the run-up to the European parliamentary elections in May 2019. The Hassel's lawyer said the Citadel does not represent generation identity and welcomed a wide range of members of diverse persuasions. He said the Hassel is not responsible for members who allege skirmishes took place, which are either imaginary or which he strongly condemns. 
The hassle said that being secretly filmed in a private space is detestable and that his discovery of this has irritated him. In episode two of Generation Hate, the hassle tells GI members use political violence when necessary. <laughs> and some of the National Front's biggest names secretly turn up at the Citadel. Ouais, c'est en guette, ça se voit. 